All right, welcome. I'm going to pull up our course website. Technologyrediscovery.net. There's our digital cow. Um, so welcome. I teach uh, Java programming. I'm starting the data analytics program here at CCAC. And it is the class, uh, we actually held our first class in the Innovation Lab before the ribbon cutting on Saturday. And it worked out so well that we are going to try something a little bit potentially chaotic, but hopefully innovative in this room. Does anyone know what we're looking at on the screen? Recognize this machine. I, I, heard, I heard a word. The Turing machine. Why would I put this on the screen at the opening of the Innovation Lab? The first computer. Who were what or who were the computers before this computer? Analog. Who's, I, I'm sorry? Analog. Analog, and they involved what? Humans. Humans. The term computer referred to a person that sat behind an adding machine and computed uh, individual computations and then use their human brain to assemble them into larger answers. In fact, it was so complicated that the computers would sit along what we would call today an assembly line. And the process was systematized such that they would do a computation, write the answer on a card, stick the card on a little conveyor belt, it would move down to the next computer, they'd pull it off the cart and it would move down. So uh, I think what this brings to light is the fact that the notion of a machine replacing jobs is not new. In fact, it was from the very beginning. The four computers behind with the writing of the cards are equivalent today might be truck drivers or lawyers or, I mean, name your profession that might not uh, fall under the possible invasion of a much sleeker but a, a machine that operates on similar fundamentals. So what did Alan Turing say that was so innovative? What he told us, what he designed was the idea that if we can make a machine that can interact with any computable number, then we can create machines that can do an entire array of things instead of a machine that only adds or only uh, tabulates ideas or tabulates numbers. It is truly a computer machine that can work with all those numbers. Uh, and what I like about the notion of innovation is that it isn't the idea of let's replace one innovation with a new one. It's can we build a foundation, an idea that shifts our thinking, that then becomes a platform for shifting further thinking. And so our question today is we are in a lab that is named after the idea of innovation. So what is it that we're actually talking about going on in this room? And so that's where we're going to get a little bit uh, chaotic because innovation can get a little bit chaotic. So um, one of the technologies that seems simple but is quite useful in an innovation context is what we see behind us, which are these moving boards. Um, they're helpful, and you see them in a lot of these innovative spaces. Why is that? Why would a moving whiteboard be a useful technology in an innovative space? It's not digital, it doesn't light up, it doesn't hook up at the internet. Creativity, let's keep going. Why does it help with creativity? <coughs> it's non-permanent. It allows for revisions and mistakes and adjusting ideas. It's also great for collaboration, which is what we're going to do now. Um, what I'm going to put on each board is one of these bubbles that you see. We're going to make mind maps together in small groups. So what you're seeing on the screen, each of the ovals corresponds, see, a little chaotic, uh, each of the ovals corresponds with a sheet that we're going to put on one of these whiteboards. And you're going to get together with a group of people that would be interested in making a mind map around this topic. 
and we will assemble these. I'll post the, I'll photograph them and put them back on this site so we can innovatively pull together our ideas of how can we make this space innovative. Having fancy chairs and computers in a row are lovely. They make for great pictures, but innovative thinking is really what we're after. So let's think about what these bubbles are. We have innovative people. So the example I came up with is Elon Musk, who has very innovative ideas about energy consumption and the idea of can we make zero cost solar and deliver it to people without them having to pay anything, which is what Tesla is doing. So that's connecting the idea of an innovative group with the idea of an innovative person who comes up with technology and those work together. Okay, so I want you to choose a bubble that's interesting to you. We have innovative people, tech related innovation, innovative groups, think Bell Labs, uh, energy related innovation, and then these two I find particularly interesting that I hope some of you will have some insight into. I want a brain, a brain mapping about what are some barriers to meaningful innovation. And I think you'll find yourself thinking less about physical technologies and more about how are we relating, what are the ways that we can relate that pre uh, prevent innovation, and then finally what are the elements of an environment? What do we want to inject into this room now that we have a physical space that will actually help us come up with those new ideas? Um, and so this is the end of our formal presentations. So when I put them on the boards, you can gather as a group. I'll put the uh, markers in between them on a little tray. And so as you're milling about, I hope that you have a chance to add to the mind mapping and hopefully have a discussion with the people around you. Um, and so before I do that, I'd just like to show you a little bit about uh, what we're doing in our classes on the data analytics side. And then we will uh, turn it over to the milling about. Uh, um, as I've been experimenting, I wanted to describe a few of the components that I've found have been most helpful at fostering student innovation and why this is a fantastic opportunity. Uh, the first in the red oval is that what we've found with the internet is very vibrant sharing communities. You probably all use Google search in the last half an hour. Uh, Google search runs on a backbone of Linux computers, which is a free and open source operating system that can be reproduced without license fees being paid. So you can make a copy of an operating system without having to worry about lawyers. And this is tremendously liberating to people that want to tinker and people that may have limited resources. We can build on that as students and teachers. On the green hexagon, component-based architecture allows for incremental changes. Uh, innovating around automotive technology is difficult. Why is that? Why is it hard to make a new type of car if you happen to be interested in cars? Expensive. It's expensive and if you come up with a new engine, what do you need to go with that engine? You need this whole car, you gotta put it somewhere. Technology is cool because you can build a component yourself, one little piece, and you can attach it together to all the others. That's why things like the Android ecosystem, Android by the way is a Linux system, if you have a, a phone you're running free and open source software on Linux, it allows you to write a program and share it and plug it into something that's already there. You don't have to make the whole car. And we can do that here in the innovation lab. We have computers all around us. The parallelogram, it's cheap. You've got them in your pockets. And that's the best available technology. Uh, over there in the corner, I have a little Raspberry Pi set up. Raspberry Pi is a small computer that can run a full operating system. You can run media centers. That computer costs $25. That's new, $25 new. We have an age where we can access uh, basically commodified computing machines that Alan Turing invented. So anyone can tinker. Virtually anybody can tinker. Uh, and then finally, what we found that's fantastic about 
technology innovation is that it's not institutionally controlled. The internet backbone is decentralized. It is managed by an international committee. The most centralized thing we've got is the domain name system, so typing in google.com. We have to somehow not have those collide. But other than that, no one person can shut it down. As much as they'd like to, uh, they can't. Uh, we all have components that can work together on the internet, even if any one of those disappears. Uh, and so with those thoughts, I would invite you to contribute to our mind mapping and please enjoy the Innovation Lab. Thank you.